On a peaceful day in the Martial Arts Alliance, in the province of Cam Tuc, it is now midday, the time to replenish energy for any martial artist wishing to have a strong and healthy body. A stout man waddles into the dining hall, his plump buttocks swing to the cheerful tune of a flute, the meal is his only joy in these dreary days. As the man enters the room, a table is already laid out with a variety of delicious dishes, dumplings, spicy tofu with Sichuan pepper, fried shrimp all tantalizingly spicy and aromatic, stimulating the taste buds. As the man sits down on the chair, it creaks and groans as if it's on the verge of death, its weak wooden legs trembling under the weight of the stout man's body. Have you ever seen a martial arts master weighing a hundred kilograms? He's so obese that his waist is equal to the girth of three ordinary people combined, and he's so corpulent that if you're not careful, you might mistake where his stomach ends and his hips begin. Have you ever seen a martial arts master weighing a hundred kilograms? He's so obese that his waist is equal to the girth of three ordinary people combined, and he's so corpulent that if you're not careful, you might mistake where his stomach ends and his hips begin. But then, an issue arises, a cold voice of a woman echoes from outside the door, causing Master Hu Gong to pause mid-reach for food, Master, it's Jay Gal, she announces with an air of authority. Hu Gong snorts in annoyance, what's the matter, he grumbles, Jay Gal responds promptly, Master, there is urgent news that I must report. Hu Gong brushes off Jay Gal's urgency and picks up a large piece of meat, preparing to put it into his mouth, I'm quite busy now. Come back in an hour, he dismisses, however, Jay Gal disregards Hu Gong's refusal and boldly swings the door open, I understand, she declares resolutely. Jay Gal is still quite young but holds the esteemed position of military advisor within the martial arts alliance, as she enters, she respectfully clasps her hands and bows to Hu Gong, greetings, master, she says with seriousness, paying her respects to the leader. Hu Gong doesn't seem bothered by Jay Gal's assertive entrance, on the contrary, he warmly beckons her closer, you didn't leave as I asked, did you, he jests, but since you're here, come join us for a meal, Jay Gal, however, remains cold and refuses bluntly, I'll end up getting fat. Hu Gong gleefully pats his chubby cheeks with self-satisfaction, ah, young lady, a woman must be a bit plump to be charming, look at me, am I not splendid, Jay Gal reluctantly responds, yes, indeed, you are quite charming, master. Hu Gong playfully covers his face, pretending to be coy as he looks at Jay Gal, really, you think so, he teases, seeking affirmation from Jay Gal. The more Jay Gal looks into Hu Gong's sparkling eyes and his innocent demeanor, the more she feels the world spinning in a whirlwind of madness, who would have thought that this person would be the leader of the martial arts alliance. After a while, Jay Gal finally can't resist anymore and bursts into laughter, her laughter is so genuine, completely different from the cold demeanor she had just moments ago. Hu Gong laughs along with Jay Gal, finally, you've shown your true self, he chuckles, laughing like a silly child, Jay Gal giggles mischievously, saying, I was actually going to tell you something earth-shattering, but perhaps it's better if I leave, Hu Gong wags his tongue in jest, have you ever left after saying that? Right after that, Jay Gal regains her serious tone and reports to Hu Gong, there are two pieces of news, one good and one bad, in the blink of an eye, Hu Gong begins enjoying the meal laid out for four people and leisurely responds, let's hear the good news first. Jay Gal promptly responds, the six forests king has found the best method for raising cattle, the quality of beef from the ox king mountain is now among the top tier, Hu Gong nods as he chews on the goat leg, really, he's finally found his life's purpose, hasn't he? Jay Gal, seeing his enthusiasm, teasingly remarks, it's too early to celebrate, Hu Gong, catching her tone, responds in jest, you're right, there's still the second piece of news. Immediately after, Jagel's tone turns serious, Chi Hyanam has sent a letter informing us that the sword saint has begun to act. She continues with a hint of concern, based on the current speed and trajectory, it's estimated that he will arrive at the alliance around noon tomorrow, however, Hu Gong remains jovial and jokingly remarks, so fast, is he flying through the air. About two weeks ago, a letter arrived in Hu Gong's hands, unexpectedly from the sword saint himself, the sword saint is renowned as the strongest swordsman. However, ten years ago, he suddenly disappeared from the public eye and was believed to have severed all ties with the martial world, yet now, he has unexpectedly expressed his desire to challenge the leader of the martial arts world. Jay Gal sits down opposite Hu Gong, her expression grave, what are your intentions, master, she asks solemnly. However, Hu Gong is too preoccupied to respond, he continues to indulge in one dish after another on the table, deep in thought. 
After a while, Hu Gong pats his belly, now full and round like a drum, and leans back with a contented sigh. After a long sigh, Master Hu Gong finally consented to speak on the main matter, with a hearty laugh, he said, 36 stratagems, fleeing is the best tactic. Upon hearing this, Jay Gal slams the table and stands up abruptly, unbelievable, she exclaims, Hu Gong chuckles and replies, no, no, compared to being chopped into a hundred pieces, resigning as the leader and running away is a hundred times better. Hu Gong calmly takes a sip of the tranquil tea, I believe with such noble virtues, the sword saint will indeed be a magnificent leader, he remarks, it's time for me to return the title of the strongest swordsman to him, I've held on to that title for thirty years, I am satisfied. Jaegal can't help but show a pleading expression, Master, isn't it possible for Tuke to have a fair fight with him, I want to witness your martial arts, since I was a child, I've only seen you eat, she implores, Hugong sighs and shakes his head, do you want to arrange a funeral for me, he quips. Jaegal continues to plead, isn't it true that you escorted villains like the bloodthirsty demon of the demon sect, the divine emperor of the shadow realm, and the death king of western Tibet to the golden stream, however, Hu Gong dismisses it with a chuckle, oh, those times were just lucky coincidences on my part. Jay Gal skeptically raises an eyebrow, so you're saying you just happened to send them to hell, Hu Gong avoids Jaegal's gaze and chuckles sheepishly, huh, that's right. Afterward, he reluctantly rubs his round belly and adds, besides, look at my body now, just walking leaves me breathless. Hu Gong, without a hint of regret, instructs Jay Gal, so, I'll sneak away tonight, everything will be up to you from now on, Jay Gal, feeling resigned, asks him, after leaving the alliance, where do you intend to go? Hu Gong cheerfully responds, I'm not sure yet, perhaps I'll go to the mansion on the Ox King Mountain, where the Six Forests King resides, or I might head to the North Sea, the mystic Ian immortal in the North Sea once said that fresh fish is a specialty there and invited me to enjoy a gourmet feast. Jay Gal pouts, expressing her disappointment, then turns away from Hu Gong, it doesn't matter where you go, in six months, I'll surely find my way there, she remarks, Hu Gong lets out a weary sigh upon hearing this, feeling a bit frustrated, you're quite a handful, he mutters. Jay Gal shrugs in response, I don't know, handing over responsibilities might take less than six months, in truth, Jay Gal knows better than anyone that Hu Gong always brings cheer and brightens the surroundings. She believes there's nothing more desirable than traveling the world with someone like him. Suddenly, at this moment, Hu Gong's face stiffens with surprise. Jay Gal still tries to salvage a bit of hope and asks Hu Gong one last time, Master, do you really not want to fight, however, Hu Gong responds with a hushed shoo in return? Jay Gal cautiously looks at Hu Gong with a face full of concern, Master, something seems off, she observes, in that moment, the atmosphere shifts, it's not the usual cheerful ambience of a playful uncle turning criticisms into jests, Jay Gal has never seen anything like this from Hu Gong since she was a child. Hu Gong raises his hand to stop Jay Gal from speaking further, the atmosphere darkens, and his expression turns grim as if something is amiss, at this moment, he hears a distant echo of voices. Though the distance is far, to Hu Gong, the voices sound as if they were whispered right beside him, he can even imagine the context of the conversation, Nguyen Swordsman, what's the matter, he listens intently, the response echoes, report to the alliance that Chi Hyanam has been defeated, he was defeated by the Sword Saint. The Sword Saint has also killed innocent civilians, everyone is dead, the voice continues urgently, what are you saying, we don't have time, the Shaolin Temple and the martial arts sects nearby have agreed to help us detain the Sword Saint, but we don't know how they'll fare, report to the leader immediately. Hu Gong's eyes narrow with a clear expression of anger, killing people, he mutters with disgust. Immediately, Hu Gong offers his judgment, the sword saint is respected throughout the land for his righteousness and integrity, there can only be one explanation for this. Betrayal, Hu Gong concludes, his voice filled with determination. Hu Gong immediately responds to the urgent news, he calms his internal energy between his eyebrows and spreads his consciousness through his senses for a moment, firstly, he needs to determine the current location of the sword saint, without knowing where to go, frantic searching would be futile. A surge of internal energy rises in the space, expanding to several miles, bringing forth a vast amount of information, including breaths and conversations of thousands of people within that range, Jay Gal cries out in panic, master, master, while members of the alliance stand stunned, all remain calm, awaiting the orders of their martial arts leader. Finally, Hu Gong hears the maniacal laughter of the sword saint at the Shaolin Temple, ha 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 ha, the 108 Shaolin martial arts disciples, is it?
Hu Gong amplifies his internal energy, his eyes beginning to shine brightly, a powerful consciousness, incomparable to before, spreads out upon hearing the declaration of the sword saint, very well, he declares, I will settle this and bathe the Shaolin temple in blood. Jay Gal, who has never witnessed her uncle's martial arts, can't help but feel amazed, Master, what are you planning to do, she asks, Hu Gong responds in a solemn tone, the sword saint has fallen into darkness. Jagel's eyes widened in astonishment, what, the sword saint, how could someone so strong end up in such dire straits? Hu Gong no longer has the mental capacity to explain further to Jay Gal, he furrows his brow, feeling perplexed, sword saint, how did you end up like this? In that moment, Hu Gong recalls the friendship between him and the sword saint, along with the revered image of a righteous swordsman. After a while, Hu Gong realizes that his current doubts are not important, he quickly discards his thoughts and swiftly departs, I must find the sword saint immediately, he declares, Jay Gal, worried, calls after Hu Gong, wait for me. However, what Jay Gal sees next is only a blinding light, the ceiling pierced and shattered, sending debris flying and forcing her to shield her face. Jay Gal looks up at the explosion of violet light soaring into the sky, Hu Gong has disappeared, leaving only a trail of light along the path where he leaped, Jay Gal is dazed and swallows dryly, Master, Master. At this moment, the bodies lie strewn along the path of the Sword Saint, cries of martial artists echoing from afar, Sword Saint, awaken. The Shaolin monks are also at a loss for words, wondering why someone so revered by the world would engage in such actions, he's considered the epitome of righteousness, yet his increasing malevolence is evident to all. Surrounding the sword saint are the lifeless bodies of martial artists and Shaolin monks, torn apart in a horrifying manner, leaving blood and flesh scattered everywhere. The sword saint begins to mutter to himself, yes, that's right, you're right. I have always been humble and moderate, I have always been cautious, the sword saint murmurs, lost in madness, his form is no longer human, thick black smoke envelopes him, without the sinister red glowing eyes and bared white teeth amidst the smoke, one might mistake it for a chance resemblance to a human figure. The Sword Saint's maniacal laughter grows even more frenzied when he mentions Hu Gong, however, that fat man, Hu Gong, always does as he pleases. The Sword Saint doesn't hesitate to unleash his pent-up frustrations, despite this, that old man is still hailed as the foremost figure in the world, looking down on people from a high pedestal, he must feel victorious to such an extent that he must have silently laughed to himself for having surpassed me. It's quite laughable for someone unable to withstand a mere incense stick before me to be the sword saint, my old man said. That's why I have no choice but to obey, for I am the one who was subdued, the sword saint declares. Therefore, I must be someone who always lives cautiously, the sword saint affirms. Someone once said that I must bow low like this because I'm not like my old man, is that true? My qualities, my talents, my strength, my wisdom, my knowledge, my behavior, above all, what does he have that I don't? The madness of the sword saint grows increasingly violent, as he shouts alongside his sinister laughter, his malicious fury erupting more powerfully. After a burst of manic laughter, the sword saint extends his hand solemnly and proclaims, I am the sword saint. Teach the pig the taste of disgrace, the way the sacred vagabond smiles cunningly while tightly gripping his fist as if squeezing Hu Gong in the palm of his hand. The four surviving individuals grew weary of the sword saint's madness, no one could speak, and he continued his monologue with a smug air of self-satisfaction, now, I am the mightiest swordsman, all must bow in reverence when they encounter me, all must revere the patience in the dark, murky days I endured to surpass that pig. The Shaolin Grandmaster shook his head, attempting to advise the sword saint once more, Amit Babuda, sword saint, you are no longer sober, why would you tread this path? However, the words of the venerable monk fell on deaf ears as they couldn't penetrate the sword saint's mind, his internal energy surged, and he lunged forward, grabbing the monk by the collar, silencing him, you ignorant fool, he sneered, you are nothing but a daily grazing donkey, knowing nothing but chewing grass. A black smoke akin to a violent storm engulfed the venerable monk as the dark tendrils danced fiercely along the sword saint's grip, desperation etched across the monk's face, realizing the overwhelming power he couldn't resist, the sword saint continued to howl, madly, I will prevail. In the midst of his frenzy, the sword saint flung the venerable monk aside with a mocking tone, the mad one is none other than I. A disciple of the Shaolin temple hurriedly ran to support the great master, saying, Master, are you alright? Meanwhile, the sacred sword continued to laugh sinisterly, no one can stop me. No one will survive under the blade of this sword, 
the sacred sword chuckled wickedly as it raised its blood-stained blade. The internal power of the sacred sword surged and overflowed like a raging storm enveloping the remaining four individuals, he arrogantly declared, with the power to destroy the heavens and earth flowing within this blade, within my veins. Now I am the most powerful being in the world, the sacred sword exclaimed, raising its face to the sky, laughing as energy surged around it. At that moment, a bright purple light suddenly appeared in the sky. The purple light shone directly down upon the sacred sword, enveloping the entire dark smoke and dispelling the gloomy blackness, the light spun in a circular motion like a whirlwind, sealing the sacred sword within. A guttural scream echoed as the sacred sword, bewildered, attempted to look towards the source of the light, muttering, what, what is this? Simultaneously, two other beams of light struck the body of the sacred sword, both of his arms fell simultaneously, blood gushing like a stream beneath the torn flesh. The sacred sword collapsed into a pool of blood with a deafening, agonizing scream, meanwhile, the hugong floated like a fairy in the sky amidst the swirling purple light surrounding his body. The sacred sword lifted its gaze, murmuring helplessly the name of Hu Gong, Hu Gong calmly glanced at him, accompanied by the three swords flying around, controlled by his internal power. The sacred sword suddenly burst into bitter laughter, his voice tinged with bitterness and disappointment. He chuckled bitterly as he bowed his head in resignation, admitting, it seems no matter what I do, I can never catch up. He looked at his two arms lying in a pool of blood with despair. Everything I've done has become meaningless, but, who gone, you won't reign supreme for long. The sacred sword rambled in bitterness and helplessness, I have seen in the darkness the vision of you losing everything, becoming so fragile that even a gust of wind would scatter you, your downfall. Who gone, irritated, cut off the sacred sword's words by flicking his finger dismissively, you talk too much. The purple sword light aimed towards the sacred sword, with a single streak illuminating through the air, severing his head and dividing his body into four parts. His dismembered body parts fell haphazardly to the ground, along with splashes of blood, the sacred sword disintegrated into pieces without a chance to scream. He appeared frail and feeble, but in reality, he had used his cunning to dominate the martial world for over 30 years, crushing his enemies with brute force and asserting his dominance in the realm. After a moment of deep contemplation, Hu Gong couldn't hold back a sigh of regret for a once respected martial arts talent, a sword saint. Six months after that day, Hu Gong slowly opened his eyes, his eyelids heavy after encountering the nightmare of the sword saint's massacre, it must have been a dream, surely, everything. As he gazed up at the ceiling upon waking, Hu Gong was astonished to notice the changes in the room, he could be certain that this was not the martial arts union, the softness and luxury of the bed were different, the sensation of the blanket unfamiliar, and the air in the room oppressively heavy. Hu Gong found himself in a different body, a heavy and seemingly breathless form, his lips were dry, his face hollow and gaping in shock, what was happening, where was he? With a sense of bewilderment, Hu Gong immediately sat up and swung his legs off the bed, this was not his bedroom, had someone moved him while he was asleep. However, as he stood up, Hu Gong felt weak to the point where he couldn't even walk properly, he staggered clutching onto the table across from the bed for support. Hu Gong clutched his chest, struggling to breathe heavily, what had they done to him, he couldn't believe that he couldn't even take a few steps without gasping for air. As Hu Gong lifted his head, he gazed directly into the full-length mirror opposite the bed, he couldn't help but be shocked to see a frail, weak young man, so thin that even a gust of wind could blow him away. Hu Gong staggered forward in astonishment, reaching out to touch the mirror with extreme confusion. What, what was this? Hu Gong stared in horror at his current emaciated body, resembling a dried up lizard. How could his body become like this? He's young again, isn't he? Wait, this isn't even his youthful appearance. Does this mean, body swap? After a moment of contemplation, Hu Gong grew even more panicked. However, he couldn't sense another soul within this body, in which case. Soul exchange, has his soul swapped with another person's, Hu Gong was filled with suspicions about what was happening but the sensation felt entirely real, so it couldn't be a dream. The more Hu Gong thought, the more bewildered he became, he clenched his fists in anger, how could he end up in such a sickly, dying body, where every organ and limb seemed to be failing? In the midst of his confusion, the sinister smile of the sword saint before his death flashed in Hu Gong's mind, along with his cryptic words, but, Hu Gong, you won't triumph for long. 
Hu Gong buried his head in his hands, pondering, could it be true, as the sword saint had said, that it wasn't just some random curse he spat out before dying. However, he had been dead for half a year, if it wasn't him, then who had swapped his soul? What did they want, his life or his body? At this point, Hu Gong suddenly remembered another equally important issue, the state of his own body now. The more he thought, the more perplexed he became, could the owner of this body have entered into his body, just as he had done with this body. At this point, Hu Gong noticed that both the neck and wrists of this body were wrapped in layers of white cloth, the flesh barely clinging to the bone, lacking any semblance of firmness or muscle tone. As Hu Gong unwrapped the cloth from the wrists, the scene became even more horrifying, there were numerous scars from knives on the wrists, and the thin, fragile forearms seemed as though they could break with just the slightest pressure, as fragile as glass. Hu Gong hastily removed the tightly wound bandages around the neck and looked into the mirror, revealing numerous knife wounds on the neck as well. However, one day, he woke up in the body of a sickly scholar, frail to the point of being skin and bones, with a penchant for self-harm and living in a tumultuous family. The more Hu Gong thought, the more puzzled he became, this wasn't even a face he had ever seen during his time as a martial arts master, who on earth was the owner of this body. After staring angrily at the mirror for a while, Hu Gong finally regained his composure with a heavy sigh, damn it, how dare they arbitrarily swap their lives with his, he hadn't even harbored enmity against anyone. Hu Gong glanced around the luxurious and elegant furnishings in the room, searching for clues, judging by the appearance of this room, it seemed to belong to a wealthy family. Then, Hu Gong looked back at the mirror with curiosity, why did this body look so miserable, he hoped that they hadn't done anything foolish to his body. As Hu Gong's thoughts remained unclear, suddenly the sound of footsteps echoed, drawing nearer, in a fleeting moment of confusion, he pondered what to do, should he pretend to be asleep, or should he go out to meet whoever it was, however, his apprehension didn't last long as the footsteps approached closer to the door of the room. Hu Gong wondered to himself, someone is coming, should he pretend to be asleep or just come out to meet them, nevertheless, his concern didn't linger for too long, the footsteps halted at the door, and then the door swung open, revealing an old man with white hair. Ah, the young master is awake, how fortunate, the old man exclaimed. The old man who entered had a lean figure, a white beard cascading down his chest, dark and sallow skin, and appeared frail, Hu Gong thought to himself, the old man referred to him as young master instead of master, this meant that the old man wasn't the culprit behind the soul-swapping incident. However, moments later, Hu Gong's eyes widened in shock as he recognized the old man's face. It was the head elder of the Heavenly Scroll sect, Biem Chion, despite some differences in appearance now, Hu Gong could be certain it was him. The Heavenly Scroll sect, the clan of geniuses standing among the top three most prestigious clans in the martial world, possessed profound knowledge of ancient texts and artifacts. Biem Chion's knowledge was so profound that it made contemporary scholars feel ashamed, he also had a somewhat attractive appearance, resembling a handsome horsefly in a peculiar way. Hu Gong observed Biem Chion cautiously as he sat down on the bed naturally, Hu Gong had encountered him before, about four or five years ago, his appearance hadn't changed much since then, this meant that Hu Gong was still in the same era, not the past or the future, but the present. After sitting down with a gloomy expression, Biem Chion waved his hand, beckoning Hu Gong to come closer, your will is mine as well, come here quickly, he said. Hu Gong hesitated for a moment but eventually followed Biem Chion's words, he staggered and stumbled closer to the bed, breathing heavily, your will, Hu Gong thought, uncertain about what was happening, but it seemed that Biem Chion considered him his disciple. Just a few steps felt like an eternity to Hu Gong, as if he was running out of breath, he quickly sank down onto the bed, feeling utterly exhausted. Biem Chion took out a large, black pill from his robe and instructed Hu Gong, take this medicinal pill. Hu Gong furrowed his brows, looking at the pill with a sense of unease, a pill, could it be some sort of tonic for this weak body? Then, he looked up at Biem Chion with a cautious, contemplative gaze, however. That pained and sorrowful look, Biem Chion did mention about fulfilling his will, and... Those traces of self-harm on this body, upon careful consideration, there was only one possible answer. Hu Gong didn't hesitate to ask Biem Chion directly in a firm tone, is this a poisonous pill? Biem Chion was taken aback, his eyes widening in shock at the straightforward question. However, there was no immediate answer to Hu Gong's inquiry, instead, Biem Chion furrowed his brows, 
and the two of them exchanged glances in silence. After a tense moment of silence, Hugong grimaced bitterly as he recalled another issue, as a disciple, he couldn't address his master in such a manner, conversation needed to be conducted with proper etiquette. Hugong cleared his throat, trying to maintain a semblance of courtesy as he addressed Biam Chion, may I inquire, master, if this is indeed a poisonous pill? Biam Chion continued to evade Hugong's question and pushed the pill towards him, insisting, just eat it, Biam Chion's refusal to deny only confirmed Hugong's suspicions further. Hugong recoiled from the pill with a forced smile, trying to shift the conversation away, before I consume it, may I ask a question, he said cautiously. With a hesitant tone, Hu Gong asked, who is the current martial arts master, Biam Chion's expression turned sour, and he grumbled lowly, what are you talking about? In Hu Gong's mind, he needed to find out if Biam Chion was involved in the soul swapping and whether this era was real or not, he tried to inquire cautiously, recognizing the importance of the matter, however, Biam Chion suddenly shouted, shut up. Biam Chion's eyes seemed to burn with anger, and he scolded Hu Gong, accusing him of constantly attempting suicide and begging to be killed, he questioned why Hu Gong suddenly cared about the current martial arts master, insinuating that death wasn't punishment enough for him. Hu Gong, startled and alarmed, quickly stepped back from the bed, realizing he might have provoked Biam Chion, he tried to soothe the enraged Biam Chion, unsure of what he had done. Afterward, Hu Gong gestured towards the door and told Biam Chion, I don't want to die anymore, please leave, we'll talk when the sun rises, he knew it was difficult to assess the situation at the moment, so he intended to take time to think things over. Hu Gong realized that he could only cope with the situation later, however, Biam Chion seemed unwilling to leave as easily as Hu Gong hoped, he clenched his fists in anger, furious, and then. With a burst of rage, Biam Chion lunged towards Hu Gong, this despicable fellow. Hu Gong instinctively raised his hand, pointing towards Biam Chion, attempting to display his martial prowess. He couldn't afford to lose, he had to resort to his strongest techniques, however, reality hit hard, there was no wind or anything remotely similar happening, Hu Gong was bewildered, it didn't work at all. With little time to ponder, Hu Gong quickly turned and ran towards the door, damn it, he had to run first. But his frail body couldn't withstand even two steps, he stumbled and fell just as Biam Chion lunged forward, what a misery, his body was too slow. After being flattened by Biam Chion's body on the cold floor, Hu Gong remembered that his body was barely able to walk steadily, let alone run, there was absolutely no chance of escaping. Hu Gong struggled on the ground, oh, sir, you're too heavy, Biam Chion, please, get off quickly. Biam Chion wasted no time, he stuffed Hu Gong's mouth with both hands and shoved the poison pill in, eat it and die, Hu Gong cried out in agony, stop. Biam Chion used the palm of his hand to seal Hu Gong's mouth shut and even covered his nose, making it extremely difficult for him to breathe, Hu Gong struggled to gasp for air, and the old man yelled into his ear, I'll follow you right away, so be it. Biam Chion kept shouting, die, die, you wretched, meanwhile, the poison touched Hu Gong's tongue, starting to dissolve and causing panic, he had to spit it out immediately, if it were his real body, the poison wouldn't affect him at all. Suddenly inhabiting a different body and facing imminent death, Hu Gong couldn't accept it, he mustered all his strength to twist his body and swing his arms towards Biam Chion. In his struggle, Hu Gong used his hand to strike Biam Chion's throat, causing him to stagger and lean to one side in shock. Biam Chion grabbed his throat and toppled to the ground, at the same time, Hu Gong hastily sat up and vomited out the poison, damn it, luckily, he expelled it in time. Despite his efforts to vomit out as much as possible, Hu Gong still felt dizzy, his head spinning, and the floor seemed to sway as his mind numbed, what was happening? Then, the floor approached his eyes, and Hu Gong collapsed face first due to the effects of the poison, his body quickly became paralyzed. Lying sprawled on the ground, Hu Gong wore a regretful expression, how miserable, was he going to die like this? At this moment, Biam Chion had risen to his feet, his grim face growing even colder, yes, hurry up and die, isn't this what you've always desired, didn't you say any amount of pain would suffice as long as you die? Hu Gong, trembling and helpless on the ground, protested, I'm not your grandson, I am the leader of the martial world, meanwhile, Biam Chion began to turn away from the room, but... Even though I've helped you fulfill your wish, as your ancestor, I find it difficult to witness this, Hu Gong murmured, Biam Chion quickly strode towards the door, eager to leave.
In this moment of desperation, Hu Gong could only curse silently, unable to even open his mouth, damn it. Hu Gong couldn't bear it, he thought to himself, is this how I'm going to die, in the body of another, a body that isn't even mine, how many people are there in this world, why did my soul end up in the body of a suicidal lunatic, I can't believe I'm dying without knowing who orchestrated this soul swap. I can't die like this, I can't die with such injustice, Hu Gong thought to himself, with that in mind, he suddenly opened his eyes and stared intently at Bian Qion, who was about to leave. Hu Gong mustered all the remaining strength in his body, if he was left like this, he would surely perish, he had to resort to his last resort. As Bian Qion prepared to open the door, a weak voice trembled, Ancestor, Grandfather. Turning back, Bian Qion was met with Hu Gong's feeble plea for help, with his last ounce of strength, Hu Gong reached out to him, he didn't want to resort to this, but he had no other choice. Hu Gong uttered scattered sounds of pleading in the skeptical gaze of Biam Chion, please, please, help. Looking up at Biam Chion with the most earnest pleading gaze he could muster, Hu Gong begged desperately, please, save, save me, ancestor, grandfather. Immediately after, Hu Gong collapsed to the floor, his vision blurred, and his consciousness fading away. Biam Chion stood completely stunned by his grandson's desperate plea for life, his expression incredulous as he struggled to comprehend. Finally, Biam Chion's pupils quivered, and he stuttered, calling out, Master, Master. Just before slipping into unconsciousness, Hu Gong faintly heard Biam Chion's anxious cries, Master, Master. At dawn, in the Martial Alliance, in the leader's chamber, a white light flickered in the room for about a tenth of a second and then disappeared, Hu Gong's body stirred, and he opened his eyes. As Hu Gong's body shifted, pulling the blanket, the bed creaked under his weight. The man's soul inside Hu Gong's body looked around the room, a profound question burning in his bewildered eyes, how could his body have gained weight overnight, whose body was this? Upon reflection, the room didn't seem familiar to the soul inhabiting Hu Gong's body, he promptly got out of bed and began to explore the unfamiliar surroundings. Inside Hu Gong's body, the soul noticed three swords hanging on the wall, a long sword, a short sword, and a broadsword, all three swords bore intricate swirling patterns resembling dragons ascending to the heavens, engraved on their blades. Feeling disoriented by the soul swap, Hu Gong's inner self hesitantly called out for his attendant, Song Hua, where are you? However, not even the slightest sound responded to him, an eerie silence engulfed the chamber of the martial world's leader. The corner of the man's mouth suddenly lifted into a sly smile, she won't come, well, more accurately, she can't come, he mused, as his hand reached for the short sword. The man chuckled knowingly as he drew the sword, could it be that our bodies, or rather our souls, have been swapped? Immediately after, the soul within Hu Gong's body didn't hesitate much and plunged the dagger straight into his own throat, this wasn't a dream. I can fulfill my wish this way, the man decisively drove the sword into his own throat, blood gushed from the wound, spraying like a fountain, and Hu Gong's body collapsed instantly. Soon after, a piercing scream shattered the peace of the martial alliance, the attendant rushed in to deliver the grim news to Jay Gal. As if the attendant had seen a ghost, he ran to Jay Gal in a state of panic, his whole body trembling, and began speaking incoherently, sounding like a person who had lost their mind, leaving Jay Gal bewildered. However, Jay Gal quickly grasped the severity of the situation as she tried to piece together the disjointed words tumbling out of the attendant's mouth, her eyes widening in disbelief. When Jay Gal rushed to Hu Gong's chamber, it was already too late, Hu Gong's body lay lifeless on the ground, blood flowing from his throat gradually staining his entire body and saturating the carpet in red. That evening, the somber sky enveloped the celestial passageway, in the chamber of the young master of the celestial passageway, Biam Chion's voice resonated with deep concern, how is Biam Hang doing? A steward, gazing down at Hu Gong lying on the bed, reassured Biam Chion, do not worry, sir, though the young master still experiences some mild effects of the poison, his life is not in danger. The steward explained the situation to Biam Chion, stating that if Biam Hang recovers quickly, it will take about a month, however, if not, at the most, it will only take a month and a half for the young master's body to expel the remaining poison and overcome the ordeal, to endure swallowing the venomous blood and still survive to this extent, the young master is indeed blessed by the heavens. Hu Gong had already woken up but pretended to be asleep, listening quietly to the steward's diagnosis, in his heart, he silently lamented, ah, so that pill was the venomous blood, huh, unbelievable. 
Venomous blood is extracted from a type of mushroom that is red as blood, although when cooked, the toxicity increases, the aroma also becomes more delightful. Hugong couldn't forget the intoxicating scent, it was his favorite breakfast treat that he rarely enjoyed in his former body because this type of mushroom was hard to come by. Hugong couldn't help but feel bitter when thinking about his current tragic situation, he couldn't believe that he had almost died just because of a venomous blood pill, and now he had to beg someone else for mercy, throughout his life, others had always sought mercy from him, and he couldn't accept lying here helpless just because of a breakfast treat. Meanwhile, the conversation between Biem Chion and the steward continued, the steward, curious, asked Biem Chion, Elder Biem, I have a question, you said the young master begged for mercy, what does that mean? Biem Chion's voice sounded cautious but tinged with suspicion, in the literal sense, you heard it correctly, if I were you, I wouldn't believe it either, even though I heard it with my own ears, I still find it hard to believe, the steward remained astonished, this is truly remarkable news, but why would the young master suddenly? Biem Chion furrowed his brows as he recalled the brief conversation with Hu Gong before coercing him to take the poisonous medicine, his expression and attitude were peculiar and he didn't even recognize Biem Chion, moreover, he addressed Biem Chion directly by name and spoke without using formal language. The steward, upon hearing this, was shocked and offered a conjecture, the young master didn't recognize you, then we must thoroughly examine whether the toxin has affected his brain, Biem Chion narrowed his eyes and asked, can poison make someone lose their senses? The steward immediately explained, yes, venomous blood is a potent poison, if the toxin reaches the brain even slightly, it can leave significant repercussions, there have been cases where individuals poison lost their memory completely, therefore, speaking rudely is also considered normal under such circumstances. Biem Chion remained silent, lost in contemplation, however, the incident occurred before Hu Gong ingested the venomous blood. Seeing Biem Chion deep in thought, gazing at his comatose nephew without saying a word, the steward looked at him with profound sympathy. The steward couldn't help but feel compassion for Biem Chion, who was afraid of losing trust even with just a glimmer of fragile hope left, surely, in Biem Chion's heart, he had found a tiny ray of hope, as his nephew, who had always sought his demise, had finally pleaded for his life. The steward, who had been loyal to the celestial passageway for a long time, sincerely bowed before Biem Chion, expressing hope that all misfortunes would turn into blessings after this incident. Finally, the moon emerged from behind the gloomy clouds in the sky of the celestial passageway, Biem Chion, clinging to a small glimmer of hope, spoke to the steward, expressing his desire for the same outcome. The next day, from early morning, there was chatter in Biem Hang's room as two young men came to visit him, one had a lively voice, asking if his elder brother needed any help, while the other spoke lazily, saying he was fine. A young man stepped into Biem Hang's room first, his gaze filled with concern as he looked at his elder brother stumbling outside, obviously intoxicated, this doesn't look good, I told you, brother, not to drink too much, the sober youth remarked, while the drunken one muttered and grumbled, dismissing his concerns, quiet down, more importantly, is this little guy still alive, he asked softly, his voice trailing off, brother is unconscious, the younger teen replied quietly. The intoxicated young man scowled disdainfully at his elder brother lying unconscious on the bed, unconscious, ha, ha, this lunatic can still sleep, can he, he might even outlive us all, he sneered, the younger teen seemed hesitant, but, big brother, he begged for mercy, so, maybe he's had a change of heart. The gentle and respectful tone of the younger brother infuriated the drunken one, who grabbed him by the collar, shut your dog mouth, big brother, swallow your words before I kill you, you only have one older brother and that thing is not human, he spat, referring to Biem Hang. The drunken man stormed out of the room in frustration, muttering curses under his breath, damn it, what a mood killer, shouldn't have bothered coming, he grumbled to himself, watching him leave only added to the tension, making me feel like I might lose it too, let's go, the younger brother followed quietly, acknowledging the situation. With the two young men gone, the room settled into silence again, in the late afternoon, Biem Chion visited, sitting quietly for a while, observing his nephew before leaving. Apart from that, the steward also came to check Biem Hang's pulse, and there were no other visitors throughout the day, Hu Gong continued to feign sleep for the entirety of that day. The conversations in this weakened state, coupled with the lack of knowledge about this body, only served to increase the sense of inexplicable fatigue, therefore, Hu Gong's priority was to maintain silence and gather even the minimal amount of information. By late that night, when Hu Gong felt there was no one else around, he could finally breathe a sigh of relief, 
No more visitors, right, he whispered to himself. Opening his eyes, Hu Gong began to piece together the information he had gathered, the eldest son of this family had just returned from the demon gate, yet only three people had come to inquire about him, however, it was thanks to this that he had gleaned a bit more information. The former owner of this body is named Biam Hang, the young master of the celestial passageway, who always had a preoccupation with death. He also has siblings, but it's unclear whether they are half-siblings or full-siblings, however, considering that one of them, presumably a younger brother, came to visit while intoxicated, it's safe to assume he was the last visitor. Anyone who could have come has already visited, indicating that the parents of this body are likely no longer alive, otherwise, how could the eldest son be so sickly and still not have received a visit, perhaps it's because the parents have passed away that the current master has taken this path. Hu Gong silently felt compassion for this family, a household where illness plagued someone like Biam Hang would undoubtedly create a somber atmosphere, and his constant desire for suicide only added to the grimness. The patriarch attempting to kill his own grandson by his own hands, yet no one bothered to show up until after he had ingested poison, it seemed like nobody around the original owner of this body was normal, could it be that the celestial passageway was on the brink of collapse? After some contemplation, Hu Gong closed his eyes, sighed deeply, and shook his head, he reminded himself that he didn't need to understand the intricacies of this family's situation, what mattered? The soul of this body has swapped with mine, but how, Hu Gong Chao was filled with doubts and a rising sense of frustration. The more he thinks, the more bitter he feels inside, as usual, he will try to unravel the truth, yet, the sword saint warned him of the looming vision in the dark, where he would lose everything, and indeed, he has lost everything, even his weight. Therefore, his top priority is to nurture Biam Hang's body enough to be able to move as he wishes, then, he is determined to uncover the truth. It seems like there has been a body swap. And the martial arts master of the past is now faced with the challenge of overcoming the turmoil within the new body and finding the mastermind behind all this trouble, let's follow the review on the Happy Comics channel to see how he tackles these challenges. At this very moment, the emaciated body's long-starved stomach roars with hunger, first things first, food is the only thing that can satisfy the urge. Since waking up, he hasn't eaten anything, just poison and a small amount of water, it's late at night, the perfect time to quench his hunger. Hu Gong plans to muster the strength to lift his upper body just enough to satisfy his hunger, but when he opens his eyes, a strange face looms right in front of him, leaving him startled. The woman also startles, hastily retreating away from Hu Gong, my apologies, sir, I was just trying to retrieve something under your chin. Hu Gong furrows his brows and snorts while breathing heavily, you got too close to my face, any issue with your eyes, in reality, he feels frustrated by the lack of sensitivity in this body, it's unbelievable, how could he not sense her presence in the room, especially when she was right before his eyes. In his old body, Hu Gong could not only sense the presence of a crawling insect within a 50-meter radius but could also determine how many legs it had, after a moment of lamenting his old agile body, Hu Gong casually asks the woman, never mind, what's your name? The woman approaches Hu Gong cautiously, young master, the poison has affected your head, Hu Gong's face freezes, what, the girl hesitantly asks again, do you really not remember anything, as the doctor said? With care, the girl leans closer to Hu Gong and introduces herself as Song Wa, relying on his experience, Hu Gong quickly notices her determined gaze and agility surpassing that of an average woman, she knows martial arts. However, hunger clouds Hu Gong's mind, leaving him unable to dwell too much on his thoughts, he feigns distress, holding his head and sighing, it seems I am quite injured, I'm not well, I hardly remember anything, so, Song Wa, could you please prepare some porridge for me, I want to eat while you tell me everything? However, Sama's reaction is so intense that Hu Gong can hardly finish his explanation, she clenches her teeth in anger, demanding to know why he's acting this way. Hu Gong awkwardly smiles at Sama's peculiar reaction, hmm, why are you so upset, Song Wa, she furiously asks again, her eyes wide with confusion and worry, why are you trying to eat, are you trying to regain strength through food, what are you trying to do by suddenly wanting to regain strength? Hu Gong's smile fades as he realizes Song Wa's concern, I'm sorry, Song Wa, I didn't mean to alarm you, I just feel so weak, and eating seems like the best way to regain some strength, I assure you, I have no ulterior motives. 
As she speaks, Songwa becomes increasingly agitated, eventually shouting loudly, so now that you've regained your strength, you want to die again, don't you? Once you're healthy, the young master will have the energy to commit suicide again, right? Are you worried you won't have enough strength to hang yourself, am I right? Hu Gong is dumbfounded by her accusation, feeling overwhelmed, even this lady seems out of sorts. Sanhua, brimming with anger, yells in front of Hu Gong, elder master. And all the other young masters too. All of us are exhausted because of you, to the point where we just want to die along with you to end it all, so please, don't try to throw yourself into the grave again, live well, and healthy, Songwa's eyes spark with determination, as if she's ready to fight her master if he insists on eating. With fury in her voice, Songwa lectures Hu Gong on the purpose of life, urging him to find his own reason for living, to laugh, to enjoy, and to look forward to a better future. Hu Gong can only smile bitterly at Songwa's intense reaction, huh, you're right, you're right, but before doing all those noble things, I need to fill my stomach first, however, Songwa remains resolute, shaking her head, no, I don't believe. Hu Gong laughs bitterly and asks Songwa a pointed question, so, am I supposed to starve to death then, indeed, Songwa becomes even more agitated, you have to eat, how can you starve yourself, how dare you behave like this, in Hu Gong's heart, there's a flood of bitterness, he wonders why something as simple as wanting to eat becomes so exhausting. When Songwa finally calms down, Hu Gong continues to observe her, he considers her martial arts skills and her responsibilities as a maid, she might have witnessed Biam Hang's suicide attempts countless times, explaining her excessive worry. Hu Gong reflects deeply, instead of arguing about trivial matters like eating, he should ask her what he wants to. Hu Gong immediately questions Songwa, Songwa, I want to ask you something. He smiles gently at her, who is the current martial arts master, however, Songwa bristles with annoyance, why are you asking that, why suddenly curious about the martial arts master, Hu Gong thinks to himself, she's reacting just as expected, if that's the case, then there's only one way. Hu Gong directly taps into the psyche of every woman's fondness for beauty, I want to hear the beautiful lips of yours tell the story, he says, indeed, Songwa's eyes light up with beauty, beautiful, beautiful lips. Songwa immediately bursts into laughter and responds, ahem, alright, since the martial arts master is currently a prominent topic, I'll tell you what I know, Hu Gong perks up eagerly at the prospect of hearing about such a prominent topic, oh, a prominent topic, he exclaims. Songwa nods firmly, of course, the martial arts master is, a pig, a bona fide pig, indeed, he's fat, extremely fat, Songwa's innocent and candid description leaves Hu Gong stunned, a pig, what? Undeterred, Songwa continues enthusiastically, I heard people say that he's so fat that his eyes barely open, how can he even walk like that, but despite all that, he's still the strongest person in the world, it's truly hilarious. And there's another rumor like this, about half a year to a year ago, he supposedly killed the sword saint by smothering him with his own weight, how can someone who just eats all day become the martial arts master, I swear, he ascended to the martial arts master's seat due to political power, not martial prowess. As Songwa mentions the name of the overweight martial arts master, Hu Gong can't bear to hear anymore, despite confirming the overlapping time frame, he immediately interrupts Songwa's rambling and tells her to stop. Songwa looks at Hu Gong with concern, young master, you look pale, Hu Gong feigns a weary expression, when do I not look pale, Songwa, confused, responds, no, you do look pale, but it's a different kind of paleness from earlier, what happened? Hu Gong sighs wearily, reproaching Songwa, you're truly venomous, how could you say such things in front of me, I mean, how can you speak ill of him behind his back like that, Songwa fidgets, trying to explain herself, but, but he really is fat, his belly is huge. Hu Gong shakes his head, defending his former self, that's because of his extraordinary presence, Songwa rolls her eyes, no way. Suddenly, Hu Gong becomes agitated and asserts loudly to Songwa, his presence is truly extraordinary. Afterwards, he tries to explain in vain, the martial arts master isn't just a great person who dedicates himself to maintaining peace and order in the martial world, how could you know how great he is, seeing Hu Gong so stirred up, Songwa grows increasingly concerned, young master, are you okay? Hu Gong continues with a bitter smile, you don't understand, the allure of a man's fullness, Songwa furrows her brow in suspicion, the allure of fullness, do you really think that way, Hu Gong sighs and responds, of course, I want to become like him. Samwa's expression becomes more subtle upon hearing Hu Gong's confident answer, she seems a bit dazed at first, then suddenly as if awakening, she says, I understand now, young master, you wanna become. 
When Hu Gong understood Song Wa's greedy heart, Song Wa quickly ran off with a radiant smile, I'll go prepare the lingerie right away. Hu Gong, finally about to eat, smiled contentedly and waved goodbye to Song Wa, based on what she described about the martial arts master, it seems like they are still in the present timeline. Alone again, Hu Gong sank into contemplation, could it be true that he and Biam Hang only exchanged souls, if so, then Biam Hang must be in the body of the martial arts master now, is he bewildered? A chilling sensation ran down Hu Gong's spine as he imagined what a deranged soul might do with such a healthy and robust body, or perhaps it was him, it was truly doubtful, but he hoped it wasn't as he thought. Ten days passed, and Biam Hang finally managed to stand on his own, the physician, after re-examining him, was also astonished, life indeed holds unpredictable twists, who would have thought that the young master would recover so quickly? Hu Gong obediently took his medication as instructed by the physician, despite only being able to eat porridge, he managed to consume two bowls at every meal, as a result, almost all bruises and wounds on his body vanished. However, instead of feeling joyful, Biam Chion seemed more worried, which was unusual, it was quite strange, this wasn't normal at all. The physician immediately reassured Biam Chion, urging him not to worry too much, he pointed out that the young master was now taking his medication and eating meals on time, despite suffering from memory loss due to the poisonous blood, there was still a stroke of luck in the misfortune, wasn't there? Biam Chion's expression remained heavy, unable to lighten up, he feared he might be hoping too much, what if the memory loss was only temporary, yet, he still longed for everything to turn out as the physician had said. The physician continued to encourage Biam Chion, affirming that indeed, in life, nobody could predict what would happen, Biam Chion nodded silently amidst a heavy sigh, honestly, he couldn't imagine that, who would have known that the master would end his life like that. Hu Gong still pretended to be asleep, but upon hearing about the master's suicide, he couldn't help but startle. The physician continued conversing with Biam Chion, acknowledging that it was hard to believe that the master departed by suicide rather than being harmed by the demonic sect or enemies, surely, even the strongest person in the world has their own worries and troubles. At that moment, the physician stopped talking and startled, shouting when he heard Hu Gong making grinding sounds with his teeth, why was the young master grinding his teeth so fiercely, Biam Chion also turned to look at his nephew, bewildered. Hu Gong's heart was filled with pain, he had considered the possibility that Biam Hang might commit suicide after swapping bodies, but he never imagined he would actually do it, seeing his nephew's apparent distress, Biam Chion quickly comforted him, sensing that the boy was having a nightmare. He gently grasped Hu Gong's hand, my child, it's okay, it was just a dream, everything is fine, the more Hu Gong thought about it, the angrier and more frightened he became, now it was clear, his soul was merely swapping places with Biam Hang's, could Biam Hang be behind all of this, it didn't matter who was responsible. Reluctantly or not, Hu Gong, filled with rage, finally exploded, jumping up and shouting, causing the two elderly people to startle and step back, I will kill you, damn it, you nerve-wracking fool, how dare you act so recklessly. Hu Gong's eyes widened and he gestured wildly, is this how you deserve to be called a human, at the very least, you should discuss it with me for an hour before doing something like this. Desperately screaming like a madman, Hu Gong continued, I will kill you, even if it costs me my life in the process. Immediately afterward, Hu Gong lost control, his mind blanking out, and he fell unconscious, due to his weakened body, the toxin had not yet been fully expelled, and the psychological shock caused his body to tense up to the point where foam formed at his lips. Biam Chion's eyes widened in astonishment, swallowing hard, you, did you hear that? He didn't say he wanted to die, did he? Suspicion filled Biam Chion's heart. The grandson lives only because of my inability to die, someone who once pursued death with all his might. At this moment, the patriarch also swallowed hard, glancing at Biam Chion for confirmation. Yes, we didn't miss here. The young master indeed said he wanted to kill someone. After a moment of shock, the two elderly individuals hugged each other, tears of happiness streaming down their faces. Someone like him also wants to kill. It's incredibly moving. What else in this world could be better than this? The next day, since Hu Gong regained consciousness, his room immediately filled with heart-wrenching cries that were indescribably mournful, an oppressive atmosphere enveloped the room. Song Wa, feeling perplexed, didn't know what to do with his master lying on the bed, crying incessantly, but with a bitter, forced smile on his face. Hu Gong laughed bitterly in his profound misery, feeling that he was truly unable to return to his old self. 
After half a day of lying down, whimpering and moaning, Hu Gong finally rose from his bed, I can't afford to be weak like this, he declared, he immediately called for Song Hua, who eagerly stood up as soon as she heard her master's call, yes, young master. Hu Gong forced a bitter smile and instructed Song Hua, let's train. Song Hua stood there, dumbfounded, with an incredulous expression on her face, I'm sorry, young master, she said. For the next five days, BM Chion's guards stationed outside the room closely monitored every movement and action of Hu Gong, and they couldn't help but be amazed by what they witnessed. On the fifth day, a guard rushed to inform BM Chion, who was stunned upon hearing the news, What did you say? he exclaimed, BM Hang is doing push-ups. The guard couldn't hide his disbelief as he replied, Yes, sir, the young master has been diligently training his body for the past few days. He recounted how at first, Hu Gong's arms trembled violently, and he couldn't withstand even a second before collapsing to the ground, but now, he could do seven consecutive push-ups and was making steady progress. Instead of feeling elated, Bian Chion sat down with a troubled expression, I really don't understand what you're saying, he sighed, and why are you reporting this only now? The guard continued, not only push-ups, but now he's also practicing squats, he even started practicing jumping jacks. The more BM Chion heard, the more incredulous he became, he exclaimed in shock, what? BM Chion pressed his temples, trying to ward off the headache that was creeping in, I understand my grandson's weak body better than anyone else, even breathing alone is a struggle for him, the guard persisted in his report, but that's not the only strange thing, sir. It seems like the young master is demanding more meals and the quantity of food has increased significantly, he also maintains drinking more than a gallon of water every day and has been training like this for several days now, the guard reported. After finishing his report, the guard's concern was evident, I think, he began, but BM Chion quickly understood his implication, it can't be, he said, and the guard continued, it's like a year ago. A year ago, BM Hang suddenly underwent a drastic change in attitude, he looked healthier, finished his meals, and even greeted people with a genuine smile, as if he had decided to turn a new leaf in life, everyone was delighted for him. However, just when everyone started to let their guard down, he attempted to hang himself again. Fortunately, people noticed in time and managed to save him. But no one could forget the deranged look on the young master's face, laughing with bloodshot eyes during that moment of crisis. The guard, panicked, voiced his speculation, this time is even more terrifying than before. I'm certain the young master is training himself to be able to end his life in an instant, we cannot allow him to grow stronger like this, we must stop him. Despite the urgency conveyed by the guard, BM Chion hesitated, deep in thought, nevertheless, this time, I want to believe in him. BM Chion felt conflicted as he recalled the moment when Hu Gong pleaded for his life, though I don't understand why he acted like that, he did beg me to save him. Afterward, he thought about Hu Gong's desire to kill someone, and even the time when he screamed in his dream about wanting to kill someone despite his trembling body, BM Chion realized that he couldn't let his own fear prevent his grandson from recovering. After careful consideration, BM Chion ordered the guards, I will talk to him myself, bring him here, the guards immediately obeyed, acknowledging the order. BM Chion anxiously questioned Hu Gong, how's your memory? Have you remembered anything yet? Hu Gong hesitated before replying, I, I still haven't remembered anything. BM Chion doubted and asked again, absolutely nothing, no progress at all, Hu Gong, panting and sweating profusely, replied, nothing, there's been no progress. BM Chion furrowed his brow, staring intently at his trembling grandson with an incredulous expression, his silence intrigued Hu Gong, who asked, what's wrong? BM Chion hesitated before asking, are you practicing jumping jacks now, Hu Gong, still struggling to widen his legs, with joints creaking, replied, yes, but I can't, it's futile, just a moment, I can't manage, BM Chion frowned, puzzled, what kind of jumping jacks involve just stretching your legs like that? Hu Gong continued to explain, my body, at the moment, is as weak as a strand of noodles, a person, living, cannot let their body be like this, however, BM Chion silently sighed, thinking, why bother with jumping jacks, he realized his grandson was just widening his legs slightly wider than his shoulders. Nevertheless, BM Chion could see Hu Gong's face turning red, his jaw clenched tightly, he was truly exerting himself to the fullest. BM Chion continued to inquire as Hu Gong shifted into a push-up position, from now on, what do you intend to do, Hu Gong replied while doing push-ups, I plan to improve, bit by bit, starting with my body.
Hu Gong continued speaking amidst his labored breaths, but there's still so much I don't understand, and so much I haven't been able to do, Liam Chion tilted his head, expressing his confusion, so much you haven't been able to do, until now, aside from attempting suicide, what else have you done? Hu Gong struggled through his push-ups, speaking slowly and laboriously to Biam Chion, I know that, people, haven't had, good thoughts, about me. Biam Chion silently observed his grandson's actions, astonished and speechless, he was doing, push-ups, seven times. Right after completing the push-ups, Hu Gong continued to astonish Biam Chion by starting to practice high jumps. Biam Chion widened his eyes in amazement, he's jumping higher than I expected. But why is he doing this in front of me? He could practice in his own room, he thought, feeling bewildered. It seemed as if Hu Gong wanted to show him this new aspect of himself. While jumping, Hu Gong continued, I have something, I want to say. Biam Chion stared blankly at Hu Gong, bewildered, what do you mean, he asked, shocked. Hu Gong suddenly declared, Biam Hang is dead, his words left Biam Chion wide-eyed and speechless, what do you mean by that, he demanded. Finally, Hu Gong stood still, sweat pouring down his forehead like rain, his breath erratic, he spoke earnestly, it's written on the face of the letter, B.M. Hang, the heir of the B.M. Hang family, is dead, since he's already dead, he can't die again, I said that so you wouldn't worry about him wanting to die anymore. B.M. Chion's eyes trembled as he looked at his grandson, who suddenly exhibited strange eyes and behaviors, he nervously swallowed dry saliva, asking, then who are you? Hu Gong steadied his breathing taking a deep breath as if about to reveal a horrifying truth. Then, with a radiant smile, he boldly declared to Biam Chion, I am the strongest person in the world. Biam Chion looked at his grandson's trembling legs as he confidently claimed to be the strongest person, he felt a sense of unease and wondered if his grandson had gone mad. Late that night, from the second floor window of a tavern, came the voice of Biam Hang's younger brother, just one more glass, okay. His intoxicated older brother replied, no, only when that bottle's empty. Young master of the heavens, Biam Bumong, felt a bit embarrassed as he watched his elder brother get completely drunk, however, it was too late now, he quickly finished his drink and decided to leave. The second young master of the heavens, Biam Yun, waved his hand in annoyance, are you only following me to say that, you've ruined the taste of the wine, just quietly pour me another drink. After draining the wine cup in his hand, Yun softened his tone, Bumong, I'm quite curious, Bumong, why are you so clueless? Yun immediately questioned Bumong, you seem quite busy lately, always heading out early in the morning, what's going on? Bumong immediately became evasive, as if hiding something dubious. Yun's expression turned disdainful as he continued, don't waste any more time, do you think that wretch has truly lost his memory, do you think he's genuinely training his body to become stronger? Seeing Biumong's lack of response, Yun sneered, Do you still remember that smile back then, it's futile, in the end, he'll stab us in the back again? Finally, Bumong countered, But, but I truly believe there's hope this time, even our ancestor said it's different this time, for the sake of our father's interests, Yun scoffed and cut Bumong off, I bet you went out to greet and flatter him, didn't you? Bumong immediately denied it, insisting, No, I just want what's best for him. Yun sighed deeply and spoke with a solemn tone, Bumong, listen, that name has turned into a demon for a while now, even if the sky falls, that truth won't change, don't forget, we almost lost our father once. With a bitter edge to his voice, Yun added, only when he dies will all of us find peace, his words instantly left Bumong feeling despondent. As the younger brother still appeared dejected, Yun chuckled and patted his shoulder to lighten the mood, don't look so gloomy, the atmosphere has soured here, let's move to another place for a drink. Bumong suddenly grasped Yun's hand, pleading, Yun, please talk to the big brother, don't act like this anymore. The youngest brother tried to convince Yun, despite the darkening expression on his face, he's different now, recently, being around him has brought joy to me, if only you could meet him yourself. Yun remained silent for a moment, contemplating Bumong's words. Filled with rage, Yun grabbed the bottle of wine from the table and hurled it against the wall, the shards of glass scattered in all directions accompanied by Yun's furious roar, silencing the room. Immediately after, while Bumong was still stunned, Yun seized the table and lifted it forcefully, are you enjoying yourself, he shouted. And what do you call him, big brother, Yun flipped the table and yelled as if that alone could quench his anger. Yun grabbed Bumong by the collar and shouted into his face, I told you, if I hear that address from you again, I will kill you.
Yoon's yelling and tossing of items startled other guests, some quietly withdrawing from the conflict area to avoid getting involved. However, not everyone was intimidated, a muscular giant who had been sitting at a distant table from Yoon stood up and stepped forward. The giant placed his hand firmly on Yoon's shoulder from behind, it was a rough and large hand, belonging to this nobleman. Yoon turned his head angrily, staring into the face of the burly man, what's the matter, he asked. The muscular man tightened his grip on Yoon's shoulder, intimidating him, guests should sit and drink in peace, he said sternly. Instead of causing a scene in such a public place, as he finished speaking, the muscular man swiftly swung his fist towards Yoon. The powerful punch descended in the blink of an eye but missed Yoon entirely, instead, it crashed straight into the floor, leaving everyone around in astonishment. When the muscular man looked closer, he realized Yoon had vanished, leaving only his fist colliding with the cracked floor. Yoon stood calmly on the backrest of Bumong's chair, displaying a contemptuous expression, you thought just because I'm drunk, I wouldn't dodge your weak punch, he sneered. Immediately after, Yoon leaped down and used his elbow to strike the back of the muscular man, get lost, don't interfere in our conversation, he spat. The giant man was swiftly incapacitated within seconds, lying flattened on the floor, his eyes rolling back, unconscious. Yoon smirked disdainfully at the unconscious muscular man, pathetic, weak and still trying to show off, he scoffed. Then, Yoon glanced around angrily, chaos erupting, tables overturned, and disorder everywhere, yet his younger brother remained seated, bewildered. Just as Yoon was about to unleash his fury, Bumong suddenly stood up and spoke, Brother, do you plan to run away forever? Yoon's face contorted with anger, bewildered by the question? Bumong looked straight into Yoon's eyes and said, Brother, are you afraid of the big brother, is that true, please, stop acting childish, I know you're scared, you lack the courage to approach him. Yoon grabbed Bumong's collar and raised his fist, you little brat. However, Bumong continued to stare at Yoon without blinking, causing him to pause his punch and mockingly retort, you say I'm afraid of him. Nothing like him, just a pathetic excuse, Yoon growled, his face filled with frustration. Finally, Yoon shoved Bumong away and angrily shouted, this is not a joke. Yoon stormed out of the tavern with an ominous aura, declaring to Bumong, if that's how it is, then look closely, I will unveil his fake facade for what it truly is. Meanwhile, Hu Gong was exercising in the backyard of the clan's building, his endurance had improved significantly, as the recent workouts had become more intense and demanding. Samwa had become a positive influence and was excited to see Hu Gong's improving health, he had just completed 25 consecutive push-ups, Hu Gong also felt satisfied with the changes in his body, compared to before when even walking was difficult, his body had undergone a remarkable transformation. Songhua continued to cheer enthusiastically as he did 20 consecutive sit-ups. Songhua was full of energy as she cheered Hu Gong on, she did 20 consecutive high jumps, genuinely happy for her master as he could now move without any hindrance. As Hu Gong stood in a stance, Songhua continued to encourage him actively, oh my, you've held the stance for 8 minutes, while delighted, Songhua knew that Hu Gong still had a long way to go. Right after finishing the basic exercises, Songhua excitedly brought out a long wooden rod, now let's try training at a higher level, she exclaimed. Feeling that his muscle strength still wasn't at the desired level, Hu Gong agreed to challenge himself with something new, with the approval of his master, Songhua's eyes sharpened as she prepared. Songhua began sweeping the ground horizontally with the long stick, while Hu Gong quickly jumped to avoid being hit. Initially, the stick only swept at ankle height, but soon Hu Gong was leaping without stumbling even as the stick swept up to knee level. Samwa burst into laughter as the stick moved from left to right and then back again, five times, you're doing great, she exclaimed, let's do two more sets of ten each. Meanwhile, Hu Gong kept leaping effortlessly and breathing heavily, no, just ten more shots, he said, adding more would knock me out, he chuckled. Suddenly, Songhua became emotionally touched and teary-eyed when she misunderstood Hu Gong's words, Master, are you worrying about me, she said emotionally, it's so touching, but please don't worry. She innocently declared, I can do this all night, Songhua completely missed the pale look on Hu Gong's face due to shock, I didn't tell you to do that, he exclaimed in panic, I said just 10 more or I'll be done for, Hu Gong breathed heavily and shouted, that's 10 times, let's take a break. Hu Gong breathed heavily in short intervals while lying on the ground, oh, 
I'm done for, he said, Songwa, sensitive to the word done for, froze immediately, what happened, she asked, startled, Hu Gong realized his mistake and quickly corrected himself, I mean, I'm just exhausted. After catching his breath, Hu Gong struggled to get up, but I can't stop here, he said, Songwa understood what Hu Gong wanted to do just by looking at him, oh, you want to plant banana trees, don't you, she said, I'll help you stay grounded. Songwa immediately lifted Hu Gong's legs and helped him maintain balance in the position for planting banana trees. After a while of training, Hu Gong noticed something in the distance, hmm, there it is, he called out to Songwa. Excitedly, Songwa asked, yes, master, do you want to take a break, Hu Gong replied, no, someone is coming over there, help me down for a moment. Hu Gong stopped planting banana trees and tried to straighten up after putting his feet down, but he felt dizzy and unsteady, Songwa quickly noticed this and supported him, careful, she said, as Hu Gong smiled in gratitude and thanked her. At that moment, Yun appeared in front of them, bursting into amused laughter, what craziness am I witnessing here, he exclaimed mockingly, a couple exercising vigorously in the dead of night. It was the first time Hu Gong saw Yun, but he could immediately recognize his identity, ah, this must be Biam Hang's younger brother, Yun, he thought, Yun, the one who dared to insult the young master of the clan without any consequences, who else would dare to plant potatoes here, Yun approached with a disdainful attitude, you madman, now you're trying to plant banana trees, he sneered. Hu Gong squinted at Yun, thinking that it might be good for him to come over, Yun's impolite attitude had been irritating him for a while, and perhaps it was time to teach him a lesson, meanwhile, Songwa whispered to Hu Gong, reminding him, do you remember him, he's the second young master of the Heavenly Scroll Clan? Despite knowing who Yun was, Hu Gong pretended to be surprised, widening his eyes as if shocked, what, he's my junior brother, he exclaimed, then why is he behaving like an uncouth drunkard? Songwa was shocked by Hu Gong's act, exclaiming, Master, you're speaking so loudly. Hu Gong sneered and shook his head disdainfully, look at your attitude, behaving like that is nothing short of uncouth, he retorted, I know there are plenty of drunkards nowadays, but I never thought my beloved junior brother would stoop so low. Yun chuckled sarcastically in response, ha, you're the one people truly detest, he taunted Hu Gong, you're trying so hard to end up as friends with the king of hell himself. I heard you're up to some strange antics again this time. Pointing directly at Hu Gong's face, Yun continued, I know you're trying, but don't waste any more time pretending you've lost your memory, I know you're just trying to find another way to the Yellow Spring. Yun continued his verbal assault on Hu Gong, raising his voice, Do you know what everyone wants? They want you dead and gone, for good? He added quietly, almost in a whisper, suicide. That's it, quietly. Even as Yun used his worst words against Hu Gong, the latter remained silent, leaving Yun unsure of what to say next. Seconds later, Hu Gong smirked, leaving Yun puzzled by his expression. What's that expression for? Yun asked, confused. Hu Gong chuckled mischievously and said, It seems like you haven't heard of my reputation yet. Standing beside them, Songwa couldn't help but worry about Hu Gong. He was starting to spot nonsense again, however, Hu Gong suddenly ordered Songwa without taking his eyes off Yun, Songwa, bring me that stick. Songwa fell silent, looking at Hu Gong in confusion, a stick, she questioned, puzzled by his request, Hu Gong furrowed his brows, glanced at her, and sternly repeated his command, immediately. Despite her confusion, Songwa felt compelled to obey her master's serious tone, without hesitation, she quickly fetched the stick and handed it to him, saying, yes, yes, master. Hu Gong swung the stick into the air a few times, feeling its weight, all right, this should do, he said contentedly. Hu Gong quickly felt at ease with the stick, without needing to familiarize himself further, though it was just a wooden stick, in the hands of the strongest man in the world, it would transform into a formidable weapon. Now, Hu Gong confirmed that he had increased his endurance to the point where he could perform 25 push-ups without rest and engage in various other physical exercises. Additionally, he could now utilize old martial arts techniques and moves due to the effectiveness of his training. Thus, defeating someone like Yun was child's play for him. Yun's eyes widened with an incredulous smirk, You, you've lost your mind, haven't you, want to fight with that thing, he scoffed. Hu Gong returned the taunting smile, Seems like you're really itching for a fight now, aren't you, let's do it, come at me, today, I'll personally teach you a lesson. The atmosphere grew tense, time seemingly standing still as the two young men, both from prestigious families, prepared to face off, each proud of their own abilities. 
Just then, a gust of wind blew fiercely toward the two of them, mysteriously tossing Hugong's hair and cloak, adding an eerie intensity to their confrontation, the wind only heightened the tension of the face-off. Samwa stood nearby, observing with extreme anxiety etched on her face, she knew Yun's strength and Biam Hang's frailty, unable to contain her worry for Hugong, she approached, Master, please don't take unnecessary risks, the second young master is skilled in martial arts. However, Hugong sternly ordered Songwa to step back, withdraw, he commanded. Immediately after, Hugong shouted into the darkness to his right, for shadow guards lurking around here, make yourselves known. He commanded sternly, I forbid anyone to intervene in this fight, even though you're here to protect me, if anyone dares to interfere. Samwa quickly approached Hugong and whispered, cutting him off, Master, they are on our side. Yun burst into laughter, simultaneously cracking his knuckles to create a threatening sound, haha, look at the weakling trying to act tough, he taunted, alright then, if you can land a hit on me with that stick, even just once, I'll call you boss. Yun began to move arrogantly, his voice filled with pride. But you better say goodbye to your face, he added menacingly, before charging at Hu Gong immediately. Hu Gong remained composed as he raised the stick with both hands, focusing intently on Yun charging towards him. As Yun closed the distance, Hu Gong aimed his strike with precision. With Yun just a hand span away, the stick was raised high above Hu Gong's head, ready to strike down, Hu Gong swung the stick forcefully, but Yun swiftly leaned aside, narrowly dodging the blow, he sneered arrogantly, ha, thought that would be an easy dodge, didn't you? However, right after that, a sound of impact between the wooden stick and flesh resounded with a thud. The stick, initially aimed downward, abruptly changed its trajectory, swinging horizontally and striking Yun's shoulder with a sharp pain. Hu Gong exerted all his strength, delivering a powerful blow that caused the stick to break and Yun to be thrown to the side, his body sliding along the ground for several meters. Yun let out a harrowing cry, feeling bewildered and shocked by what had just happened. What happened? He exclaimed in a panicked state. Thrown against a nearby tree trunk, Yun slid down to the ground, sitting in confusion and distress, he wondered to himself how the crazy guy managed to do that, was it just a coincidence? Hu Gong chuckled triumphantly as he approached Yun, feeling the pain yet, he taunted, you can call me boss now. Yun laughed mockingly, teasing Hu Gong, of course, I'll call you, boss of dead dogs. Despite his arm numb with pain, he stood up defiantly, still taunting Hu Gong, are we done here, that's just normal banter, you know, I have to address you like that. Then, pointing at Hu Gong's face, Yun declared, but if you want me to call you the elder brother, you'd better tell me to bite my tongue and die, Hu Gong, with a fond smile, raised the stick, you're still not waking up, huh, kid. In the blink of an eye, the stick landed squarely on Yun's disrespectful hand, Hu Gong remained calm as he said, no other choice, I guess I'll have to massage it a bit more for you. Following that were relentless strikes from Hu Gong, each blow hitting its mark and causing Yun to feel increasingly overwhelmed, he started to sense that something was amiss. Seeing Yun being thrashed mercilessly, Songhua tried to intervene and prevent things from escalating further, Master, please, stop, she pleaded desperately. Bumong, horrified, tried to advise Hu Gong, boss, there's no need to go this far. However, Hu Gong continued relentlessly swinging the stick, while Yun could only endure in confusion, he wondered how Hu Gong could be so precise with his strikes, the first hit in the current attack seemed too coincidental, it was absurd, but if it wasn't coincidental, what else could it be? Yun became increasingly bewildered as he pondered how Hu Gong could become so strong in such a short period, just a while ago, he seemed nothing more than a lifeless body. Yun's inability to think clearly and being repeatedly struck fueled his growing frustration and anger, he glared angrily at Hu Gong, seething with rage. In that moment, facing his eldest brother, Yun's perception completely shifted, he remembered what Bumong had said earlier, Huin was different now, lately, interacting with him had even brought joy to Yun. Grinding his teeth in frustration, Yun thought, don't be fooled, he can't change, eventually, his true colors will show. Yun's determination burned fiercely, to the point of stubbornness, he unleashed his internal energy in a surge of anger, I can't allow myself to be deceived like this, he resolved. Hu Gong quickly sensed the shift in Yun's aura. In his fury, Yun had resorted to one of his signature techniques, vowing to himself, I will never trust you, demon. After channeling his internal energy into his hand, Yun swiftly swung his arm towards Hu Gong, 
employing the rotational fist technique. Yun aimed a powerful punch directly at Hu Gong's chest, fueled by his determination to put him to sleep forever. However, instead of being startled, Hu Gong burst into mocking laughter at the seemingly inexperienced technique of Yun, which left him astonished and wide-eyed in disbelief. Hu Gong gracefully dodged Yun's attack, smoothly shifting his body and stepping aside, he then taunted Yun with a derisive tone, well, well, you truly tried your best. In the blink of an eye, Hu Gong found himself standing behind Yun, wearing a sinister smile, he continued, if you really can't keep your wits about you, then I'll have to resort to other means to awaken you. Despite his seemingly jovial demeanor, there was a palpable sense of danger emanating from his smile. Yun quickly turned around with a shiver running down his spine, what was this madman planning to do next, what did he mean? As Yun spun around to face Hu Gong, still not grasping his intentions, the staff was already aimed straight at his head. In that moment, Yun knew his life was as good as over, his eyes narrowed to a small bit, a mixture of shock and bitterness evident. The staff's head swiftly reached its target, a crisp sound of a cracking eggshell echoed, and Yun gasped in horror, unable to even scream from the extreme pain. Yun collapsed to the ground right beneath Hu Gong's feet, clutching his groin, a moment of agonizing silence and tension enveloping the stillness of the night. It took a while before Yun could shake off the psychological shock and stutteringly open his mouth in panic, and master, master. Diu Mong's cry of concern and compassion pierced through the night sky, awakening all creatures within a radius of 20 meters, senior brother. Bumong dashed frantically towards Yun, who lay curled up on the ground, senior brother, meanwhile, Hu Gong remained unmoved by the urgent cries of his junior. Bumong approached with an expression of extreme distress, senior brother, are you all right? As he rushed closer to Yun beside Hu Gong, the latter immediately pointed the staff towards him without any hesitation. Hu Gong coldly commanded Bumong while wearing a sly smile, Bumong, step back, I'm not done yet. At this point, Yun had regained consciousness but still writhed in pain on the ground. Hearing Hu Gong's declaration sent a chill down Yun's spine, his face contorted in horror, while what, sweat and saliva dripped from him in fear. Yun cursed silently, you wretched fiend, soon after, a cacophony of sounds filled the air, blending the sounds of blows and screams echoing everywhere, Hu Gong relentlessly beat Yun without pause. Yun sprawled on the ground with his hands wrapped around his head, damn it, he couldn't even tell him to stop because he was too busy screaming, how to get out of this situation, how? Knowing that advising with words wouldn't work, Song Hua immediately rushed forward and firmly gripped Yun's armpits, he would die if he didn't stop, so he halted his actions, Yun was so shocked that he became motionless, Hu Gong smirked with an aura of danger and continued to advance, saying, let him go, or I'll kill him. In that moment when Hu Gong relaxed his grip, Yun saw a glimmer of hope and quickly knelt down in homage, calling out, senior brother, deep in his heart, he thought, Song Hua is restraining this madman, I must seize this opportunity, swearing by his masculinity, he knew he was about to die, so he had to find a way to escape. Yun hastily bowed his head to show reverence to Hu Gong, saying, senior brother, please be lenient, I was wrong, senior brother, however, deep down, Yun couldn't bring himself to accept it and cursed silently, feeling miserable that he had to address him as senior brother just to save his life. Only then did Hu Gong lower his staff, but he still berated and scolded Yun loudly, what in the world are you thinking, do you even know who I am, and you dare to act so recklessly? Yun stuttered in response to Hu Gong's strange question, um, that, that matter. In his desperate situation, Yun suddenly recalled the words Biem Chion had spoken to him not long ago, it was indeed strange, Biem Chion had claimed himself to be the greatest master in the world, which now seemed like the ramblings of a deluded mind, don't give him too hard a time, be careful in dealing with him, Biem Chion had advised. Yun immediately put Biem Chion's words into practice, he cheerfully flattered and buttered up Hu Gong without any hesitation, senior brother, you are the greatest master in the world. After Yun's exaggerated flattery, a tense silence ensued, making the atmosphere even heavier, Yun nervously looked up at Hu Gong with hopeful eyes, praying silently for a way out of the dangerous situation. Immediately after, Hu Gong burst into laughter and slammed his staff down in front of Yun, ha ha ha, Yun forced a laugh, feeling bewildered, unexpectedly, Hu Gong asked him, have you lost your mind, let me knock some sense into you. The smile on Yun's face froze, his expression turning pale as beads of sweat poured down in horror, what, Hu Gong coldly ordered him to lie down. 
Yun hesitantly pleaded, please wait, senior brother, however, Hu Gong gleefully swung his staff with authority, still dare to argue, seems like you haven't come to your senses yet, Hu Gong remarked, Yun stumbled to explain, it's not like that, but Hu Gong cut him off, seems like you think I'm joking, lie down. Yun reluctantly lay flat, supporting himself with his hands on the ground, obedient to Hu Gong's command, with a mischievous grin, Hu Gong asked him, how many strokes, Yun hesitated for a moment before reluctantly choosing an average number, five strokes. Hu Gong burst into laughter, teasingly saying, make it seven strokes, so you'll remember it well, he chuckled in a mocking manner, Yun, though unwilling, could only curse silently in his heart, damn, why did I even ask? Hu Gong gathered the strength of 25 push-ups into the strike and mercilessly brought the staff down onto Yun's buttocks without any mercy. The force of 25 consecutive push-ups condensed into a single strike created a resounding thud echoing all around, the staff shook under the strain of the powerful 25 full push-ups, seeming to be wedged into Yun's buttocks. Yun gritted his teeth, trying to endure the pain to maintain his last shred of dignity, however, the agony proved to be too much for his rear end to bear, Yun quickly let out a sharp cry of excruciating pain. His cry echoed throughout the entire mansion, reaching every corner, those present at the scene could do nothing but witness the disciplinary action of the young master against his defiant. That night, Yun returned to his room with his swollen and sore buttocks, he collapsed onto the bed, exhausted and whimpering in misery, feeling utterly wretched and damp all over. Yun couldn't even move his body once he lay down, he grumbled and cursed at Hu Gong, questioning how he could lay hands on someone like that, treating them like a dog. However, amidst his groans of discomfort, Yun suddenly felt a flicker of hope in his heart, he remembered the moment when he was forced to call Hu Gong's senior brother, even though he had only done so to save his own life. Yun involuntarily forgot about the physical pain and sank into a stream of reminiscence, how many years had passed since then, since he swore he would never call him senior brother again. Yun used to love calling Biam Hang like that when he followed him around as a child, back then, Biam Hang was known for his intellect, never needing to look at a book or anything twice to remember its contents, he was the person Yun respected the most. That's why, when tragedy struck Biam Hang's family, Yun was more disappointed and angry than anyone else, he believed Biam Hang would come back to his senses, and he patiently waited for him for a long time. However, in the end, Yun gave up after being disappointed by Biam Hang many times, he gradually became more resentful towards his older brother and lost faith in him. Yun sat up, deeply pondering, he never expected to be struck by that madman with such force that even someone trained in martial arts like himself couldn't bear it, in this moment, despite being beaten, Yun felt a strange sense of relief. Continuing to reflect in doubt, Yun wondered, has he really learned martial arts, could he have reached such a level in such a short time, he may be intelligent, but this seems too unbelievable, just as Yun was struggling with his thoughts, Bumong appeared at the door with a weary expression, senior brother, Yun immediately called Bumong in, come in, what's the matter? Bumong entered the room, crying, his eyes were not only swollen but also filled with tears, Yun immediately became worried, why are you crying, what's wrong, he asked, Bumong sniffled and replied, senior brother, please forgive me, I have been foolish not to recognize your generosity. Yun looked bewildered, what are you talking about, Bumong cried out pitifully, I have seen things differently now, you let senior brother hit me to increase my courage, right, you allowed him to train me, you've been letting him hit the same spot repeatedly, and not only that, Yun was puzzled and tilted his head in confusion, wait, what? Yun began to realize that Bumong had misunderstood the situation, he couldn't possibly fight back against Hu Gong, meanwhile, Bumong continued to cry, pleading for forgiveness, convinced of his misinterpretation. Immediately, Yun rose and grasped Bumong's shoulders, suddenly realizing something, what are you saying, I let him hit you, did you see that, Bumong, confused by Yun's question, hesitated before replying, uh, yes, that's right. Yun's head spun as he thought back to the blows Hu Gong had delivered earlier, it couldn't be true, the way he intervened didn't seem to make sense for them, there was another significance to it, beyond mere discrepancy, what Dika wanted to convey was a completely different level. Bumong continued to cry, trying to comfort Yun, more importantly, Huin's knee is fine, right, I cried incessantly when I saw it being struck, every man knows that pain, if it breaks, Huin will become a cripple, Yun realized the gravity of the situation, if Hu Gong's knee had been damaged, it would have dire consequences, even affecting Hu Gong's status within their group. Meanwhile, Yun pondered the incomprehensible disparity in skill between himself and Hu Gong, 
wondering how he could execute such chaotic yet precise strikes, he suddenly felt a chilling sensation wash over him, contracting his muscles, the disparity in Hu Gong's abilities was extreme. Yun's expression turned pale with astonishment, was Hu Gong truly a genius beyond comprehension, Bum on, unaware of Yun's thoughts, cried even more, speculating that perhaps Hu Gong intended for Yun to lose consciousness when struck in the knee. Seeing Yun remain silent and seemingly lost in thought, Bumong wiped away his tears and left, his heart filled with anger, as Hu Gong's younger brother, he couldn't overlook this matter, it was only then that Yun snapped out of his daze, his face a picture of confusion, what's going on, he wondered aloud. Bumong gritted his teeth with a furious expression and declared, I will seek revenge for senior brother, trust me, Yun was taken aback by Bumong's sudden change in demeanor, what are you planning to do, he asked, feeling uneasy. The next day, Song Hua caused a commotion early in the morning, young master, last night was truly wonderful, one person was driven to despair, while another took relentless action, he exclaimed excitedly, I was worried about you, but then I became concerned about the second young master, however, Hu Gong was not satisfied with his own actions last night, he exercised caution and deliberation while pushing himself, he added. Yun felt a sense of foreboding as he listened to Song Hua's words, it seemed that the events of the previous night had left everyone with mixed emotions, including Hu Gong himself, who seemed to be reflecting on his actions. Hu Gong recognized that there was a problem with the strikes from the previous night, although his endurance had increased significantly, he couldn't execute simple and proper strikes as effectively as he had hoped, he couldn't believe it took him so long to subdue a drunken troublemaker. Slowly, Hu Gong began to understand the root of the issue, his soul had not yet fully merged with B.M. Hang's body, this meant that he couldn't achieve complete harmony between his soul, essence, thoughts, and this body. For his soul and essence, Hu Gong could improve through his own efforts, he realized that he needed to work on integrating his soul and essence more thoroughly with B.M. Hang's body in order to enhance his martial abilities. However, the most crucial issue remained, thoughts. Hu Gong couldn't access B.M. Hang's memories, so their thoughts couldn't fully integrate, Without this integration, their minds couldn't synchronize completely, hindering Hu Gong's full control over Biam Hang's body, only when everything came together could this body truly be considered Hu Gong's. Hu Gong continued to push himself physically and mentally to become stronger, it would be ideal if he could access Biam Hang's memories, that way, he could understand his past experiences and thoughts, leading to a more complete integration of their minds and ultimately enhancing his martial prowess. Samwa, feeling bored, changes the subject, the third young master probably won't come to greet us today, considering how he dealt with the second young master yesterday, he remarks, Hu Gong, with a smirk, responds confidently, he will come, I'm sure he's quite pleased with last night. Samwa, surprised, asks, why is that, Hu Gong smiles, showing his faith in Bamong, Bamong is a bright and amiable child, among those I've met, no one has as clear and pure a gaze as his. Samwa mischievously tosses cold water at him, saying, if you rarely go out, how do you manage to meet so many people? Hu Gong, upon realizing his current identity, hastily tries to come up with a clumsy excuse, claiming he read about it in a book, Samwa bursts into laughter, teasing him, you learned that from reading, how humorous, just then, Bumong swings open the door to Biam Hang's courtyard with a serious expression. Both Hu Gong and Samwa turn to look at him in surprise, Bumong. Bamong, with a stern face, points directly at Hu Gong and erupts into a furious tirade, you despicable scoundrel, the scene leaves Hu Gong stunned, why would Bamong, a smart and gentle child, act in such a way? Bumong's accusation rings out harshly against Hu Gong, condemning him for his actions, Biam Hang, senior brother is supposed to be a mentor, yet he acts like this, what if senior brother intentionally let you hit him, how could you strike at his knee, Hu Gong, feeling bewildered, tries to calm Bamong down, but Bumong remains resolute, I can't. Bumong swiftly draws his weapon and brandishes it with confidence, demonstrating his determination, I'll show you what will happen if you dare to underestimate us, I'll exact revenge a hundredfold for what you've done to second senior brother. Hu Gong struggles to contain his laughter at the sight of someone wielding a nunchaku like that for the first time, he hadn't expected Bumong to be proficient with it, meanwhile, Samwa, concerned, approaches Hu Gong and asks softly, what are you planning to do with the third young master? Bumong twirls the nunchaku fiercely, creating a blur of motion that can only be seen as after images, he emits sounds akin to a rooster crowing as he wields the nunchaku, spinning it from his shoulders to his waist and even under his armpits. 
However, the spectacle doesn't last long, Yoon steps forward and delivers a firm blow to Byu Mong's head, kid, who uses nunchakus at a time like this, I've told you countless times that those who wield nunchakus in the martial world end up with swords piercing their hearts. Samwa becomes even more alarmed upon seeing Yoon's arrival, the second young master is here too, please don't tell me they intend to seek revenge against the first young master, just then, Yoon speaks up to dispel Songwa's worries, senior brother. Yoon courteously bows his head in greeting to Hu Gong, I've come here to wish you well, senior brother, are you resting well, the sight leaves everyone present, including Hu Gong, utterly astonished. Having endured such shocking events, our main characters have even resorted to consuming the foulest creatures on earth in hopes of regaining their once robust physiques.